today will be Evangelist Lena Horge. Let's receive Evangelist Horge at this time. God bless you, Evangelist Horge. Well, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thanks of God. Amen. Give an honor to my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and to my pastor, Bishop John Thomas Leslie Jr., and to the elect lady, Louise Leslie, and also to District Elder Robert Taylor and Lady Melinda Taylor, and to our pastoral assistants, amen, Evangelist Margaret Williams and Evangelist Doris Thompson, and to my Horch family uh, that's on the line, we praise God for you also. And I have friends down in West Virginia. I want to praise God for you and thank you so much for joining us. Amen. Amen. We do thank and praise God for all of you in the sanctuary. And we give God glory. We give God honor for what he is doing, what he has already done. Amen. Our lesson today is separating the sheep from the goats. Separating the sheep from the goats. Uh, and that's coming from Matthews 25. 31 through 46. Those of you that have your Sunday school books, you're fine. But those of you that are looking from your Bible, make sure you go to Matthews 25, 31 through 46. And related scriptures are Deuteronomy 15, uh, 7 through 11, and Daniel 7, 9 through 14, Matthew 16, 24 through 28, and 1 John 4, 7 through 14. And the time is AD 30. And the place is Jerusalem. And our golden text at this time, and these shall go away unto everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto life eternal. Amen. Amen. We thank God for his word. Amen. We look at, let's go back and do a little bit of history um, as to when uh, God called, God created Adam and uh, uh, gave Adam a job to take care of the garden and to, um, and Adam could not find a help meet. So God made him a help me to put him to sleep and took a rib from his side and made woman, and he brought Eve to Adam, and Adam called her woman. And, uh, and God had given them, given him charge, given him a uh, commandment, and that he could eat from every tree um, in the garden, except for the tree of, of, of good and evil. Uh, so God did not want him to eat from that tree, to eat him from the knowledge of good and evil. God God gives us a commandment to do. He means for us to do just that. And once they did that, they were in the dispensation of innocent at that time. Uh, so then once um, before they sinned, but once they sinned, they were in the dispensation of conscience. They were aware of their sin. And then we have the, have the dispensation of human government. And each, each, each dispensation ended uh, with destruction uh, uh, glory to God. And then we move on to dispensation of the promise. And God gave the promise to Abraham. And uh, Abraham told Abraham to leave his family and, and uh, his friends and go to a place where he would, he would tell him where to go. And Abraham walked by faith. He believed God and he went and he did exactly what God commanded him to do. And um, then we go on to the dispensation of the law and how the law um, gave the law to Moses and how uh, he raised Moses was raised up in Pharaoh's house to learn um, how they lived and learn the language and learn everything about the Egyptians. You learn call Pharaoh's Pharaoh's uh, daughter's son. Glory to God. So here we are, and Jesus himself lived in during that dispensation, a dispensation of the law. And uh, Jesus' ministry started when he was 30, when he was 30 years old. So here he is, he going on 
uh, into his ministry now, and he's beginning to tell the people how to live and how they have to receive uh, the word of God and how they have to uh, 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 command that the enemy go from them and they can uh, cling to God's word. Amen. We're looking at whosoever, Matthew 12 and 50, so whosoever shall do the will of my father, which is in heaven, the same is my brother, sister, and mother. So Jesus is saying, whoever is doing what I have commanded you to do, that individual is my sister, my brother, and my mother. Um, so here we are. Jesus is coming back for his church. And we uh, at saints of God, we have to prepare ourselves to meet our God, and we have to live that holy life before him, and this, this part of the uh, lesson is immediately after the tribulation of those days uh, shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the power of heaven shall be shaken. Uh, so these things are going to happen when Jesus make his second coming. This is the second coming of Christ that we're um, into uh, on this lesson. Amen. And then it shall, and then shall appear the signs of the Son of Man in heaven. And then shall all the tribes of the earth moan, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and with great glory. Uh, and we're talking about the rapture when the rapture takes place. Uh, and he shall stand, shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds and from, and from the end of the earth, of heaven to the ends of the earth. Glory to God. Here the Lord is preparing and letting us know what's going to take place um, when the rapture takes place. And the rapture is Jesus making his appearance, not coming all the way to the earth, his first coming was when he was born, but in his second coming, which we are where we are now, is when he makes when he comes back to the earth the second time. And uh, Jesus wants us to just uh, live that holy life before him. Um, and Daniel speaks of the seventy weeks determined upon the people and upon the holy city. Uh, how Jesus is going to uh, judge and Daniel said in 9 and 24 that um, it was 490 years totally pertaining to uh, bringing uh, transgression and sin and iniquity to an end. And um, how God has looked at it is that um, he, it wasn't his will that any should perish, but all will come unto repentance. So here um, to bring transgression and sin and iniquity to an end, there had to be some blood shedding. So Jesus came in the likeness of sinful flesh so that he could condemn sin in the flesh, uh, that the righteousness of, of God might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. Um, there will be a period, it's still in Daniel, there will be a period of seven weeks, which is 49 years, and followed by 62 weeks, which is 434 years, uh, making a total of uh, 483 years from the decree until the coming of the Messiah. And that was once uh, Daniel had that um, prophecy, God had given him that prophecy to the coming of the Messiah when Jesus would come. And after three scores and two weeks, shall the Messiah be cut off. So we are looking at now that the Messiah has been cut off. Um, this Messiah died on the cross. Jesus, the Messiah, he died on the cross. And that's what they're talking about. Uh, he died on the cross for mankind's sin, for man, so that man could be redeemed back to God. Man would have the opportunity to be redeemed. Uh, Adam sold uh, mankind out when he took of the forbidden fruit that God had commanded him not to touch, not to eat from. Well, once he ate from that fruit, he, his wife gave him the fruit and he did eat. He did not say, no, I'm not going to eat that. God commanded us not to touch that. I'm not going to even, he did not do that. He ate from the fruit that God forbid him not to eat from. So therefore, 
sin came up, came in the world and sin was upon, upon every individual that was born in the world. Thank you, Jesus. Jeremiah said, uh, 5 and 12 say, if thou had run uh, with the footmen and they have wearied thee, then how canest thou contend with the horsemen? Uh, so in other words, we're looking at how, how in the world, if we can't keep up and we can't do what we're supposed to do during this dispensation, dispensation of the grace, we can't do, we can't live the holy life and, and do what we're supposed to do. How are we going to keep up with the footman uh, during the tribulation? There is no way we will be able to do it. So therefore, um, Jesus came, he made a way of escape for his people that we as people of God can live holy, righteously, and godly in this present world through the shedding of his blood. And this is during the dispensation of the law that Jesus was living in. Um, let's go on to our lesson a bit. Um, uh, judging the righteous, judging the righteous. Say, when the Son of Man uh, shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him, shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them one from the other as a shepherd sep uh, as a shepherd divided his sheep from his goat and he shall set the sheep on his right hand but the goats on the left then shall the king say unto them on his right hand come ye blessed of my father inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hunger and ye gave me meat. I was thirsty and ye gave me drink. I was a stranger and ye took me in. Naked and ye clothed me. I was sick and ye visit me. I was in prison and you came to me. Um, this is during the time um, during the time of tribulation. The tribulation was going on and uh, um, the 144,000, here they were, they were teaching, they were the preachers during that time. Um, also, and, and, and there were others that turned to the Lord, but uh, they had to be mortal. No one um, could serve the Lord during that time. And that, and we're talking about future. We're not talking about right now. We're talking about future. What is going to happen in our future? Uh, and we're speaking of it as now, but um, this is in the future. So the thing is, we don't know how long death, how long we're going to be in this world. We don't know where death is. So therefore, our time is now is to seek the Lord while he may be found and call upon his name while he is near. Uh, some believers, um, believers believe that preaching the gospel should be our priority mission, uh, while others believe that the basic needs of human being uh, should be our priority mission, but both are very important. Preaching the gospel and hearing, having the ears to hear what the spirit has to say unto the church. And also uh, helping one another, lending a helping hand, uh, supporting one another, uh, giving to one another. It means so much. And during the time of tribulation, saints, uh, they were, there was no, um, if you if you were alive, uh, it, if, without taking the mark of the beast, you could not eat. There was no food uh, because you couldn't use your money to buy food. You couldn't couldn't buy. So therefore, you had to take the mark. Of, they had they took the mark of the beast so that they could spend money and get food. Uh, there was going to be a famine in the land, and uh, so that they would be able to um, function um, correctly. But what? What happened with those that refused to take the mark of the beast because they loved the Lord and they were determined that I'm not going to take the mark of the beast. Um, 
There were times that they went hungry. There were times that they suffered. There were times that, uh, that uh, they were sick and no one came. Uh, so this is what Jesus is looking at, that whatever they were going through during the time of tribulation, they needed support from the saints. They needed the people to help them. Uh, they needed uh, ones to bring them food. They needed one to bring them water. Uh, I have a feeling that you couldn't even get water. There was nothing that you could get um, without taking the mark of the beast. But those, uh, the, those that did take the mark of the beast and they still brought to them. But one thing about our God, our God will supply our every need and that we must have, we must trust God for supplying those needs. Glory to God. God. And uh, we know that uh, tribulation was a, going, they were going through a lot of suffering, but the thing is they had to rest in the Lord and knowing that the Lord will take care of them. And maybe some days they had to fast um, uh, because there was no food, but the Lord did not let them uh, go without, but so long. The people will either suffer everlasting punishment or they will endure uh, joyous eternal life. Eternal life is what the people want, was planned, what they determination was to enjoy eternal life. Uh, Christians will find when they mention the truth that they may be called simple minded or extremists or whatever. People sometimes call you out of your name because you are determined to stand on the truth. And this is what we, what we have to do. We know that God's word is true. And we know that we have to stand on the promises of God. Uh, God will never fail us. He will never, al never allow the enemy to take us down as long as we trust God, as long as we stand on the promises of God. God will take care of his own. One might think that we're conceited and, th and that we think that we are among the fortunate uh, or to go to heaven saying those who disagree and live a life according to their flesh will be like the rich man who lifted up his eyes in hell. And that's what happened to the rich man. He lifted up his eyes in hell because of the fact he did not, he did not fear God. He, um, uh, in our Sunday school lesson last week, and Vangelis Williams was teaching that, my God, my God, the rich man, uh, because Lazarus sat at the gate and he wanted food. He needed, just needed the food. He, just, he said, I'll eat the crumbs that fall from the rich man's table. Uh, just give me, just give me a little bit. Uh, but the rich man would not even give him anything. He wouldn't give him even the crumbs, uh, the leftovers would not give him. Um, so the thing is, is that we have to be able to share and give to one another, help one another. We see our brother or, or sister in need and shut up our bowels of compassion. The word of God said, well, how dwell the Lord of, word of God in us? Ah, glory to God. So we uh, recognize, hey, that, that we have to, we have to do what is right. Glory to God. And uh, you're looking at the... Uh, uh, there was natural man, there was a natural, there's a natural man, there's a carnal man, there's a spiritual man. And the natural man never been saved. Um, the carnal man is one that's been saved and gone back into the world. And then the spiritual man is one that is saved and living her holy life. A spiritual man uh, was clothed in Christ's righteousness. Glory to God. And, and uh, the mind has been transformed so that that mind can serve the Lord. See, but uh, uh, if we allow the enemy to get into our thoughts and tell us what to do, uh, then we will become carnal minded. But uh, God wants us to be spiritual minded uh, to follow after those things that are good, those things that are pure follow after good things. Uh, so here God is, we, we know that the time is drawing nigh and soon Christ is going to descend from heaven with a shout. 
and with the voice of an archangel and with the trumpet of God. And he said, the dead in Christ is going to rise first. Uh, so those that are dead died in the faith. Those that believed that Christ was coming back for them, they died in the faith in believing that, uh, that the Lord is going to come back and take me home. So here, and those that are alive and remain. So everybody's not going to be dead. There are going to be some that are alive and they're going to be caught up and going to change from mortal to immortality. And those that were dead, they change from corruptible to incorruptible bodies. Uh, and they will rise up and meet the Lord in the air. And that is called uh, the catching away of, of the saints. Amen. So we look at how God is going to, how God is working this thing. God, it wasn't, that wasn't God's will that any, any should perish. And we know that hell was made, hell was made for the devil and his angels. It was not, uh, God didn't make the hell, didn't create hell for, for him, for the people. He didn't create hell for the people, but because of their choices, God gave everybody a choice. And because of the choices that they made uh, to, to serve the enemy instead of serving God. And the only way we can serve God is to know his word, to know what God is telling us to do and how we should live and what we should do, how we should treat one another and how we should love the Lord our God with our whole heart, mind, soul, and all our strength. Uh, God is showing us how how to do everything that we need to do according to his word god is the creator of the universe uh he breathed life into every creature every creature and when we breathe when we breathe and we inhale and exhale um that spirit that that life that uh breath goes back to the god that gave it and it tells us tells god what has been going on what we are doing in uh in this life and what we're doing, what have we have done in these bodies. So we have to um, know that to think the right thing, do the right thing, and always be encouraged to live holy before the Lord. Um, first, we look at 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 17. Say, but I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as other that have which have no hope so here we are um god said i would not don't don't be ignorant of this thing uh I, god is coming christ is coming back coming back for his people so don't be ignorant of of that when i die that it's that's it no that is not it it's just beginning because every individual have everlasting in them everlasting have everlasting in them whether it's life eternal or life uh, to unto damnation so we have to uh live that holy life before the lord um there are two departments um when when uh, when um when john uh, jonah when jonah excuse me when jonah was in the belly of the fish and Jonah and the belly, the, the fish has swallowed Jonah up. And here Jonah is in the belly. When the fish spit Jonah out, uh, while he was in the belly, he could not, there was no way he could live. There was no way, no way he could breathe. So uh, when an individual go down in Jesus' name, go down in Jesus' name, they are buried, buried with Christ, buried with Christ. And that's what, um, Romans 6, um, they are buried with Christ and, and they walk, come, rise up to walk in a newness of life. So if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, uh, also with those that sleep in Jesus will Christ bring with him when he comes back for his church. Glory to God. So we're looking at uh, when the son of man shall come in his glory and and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit on the throne of his glory. We're talking about Jesus sitting on the throne of his glory, glory to God. And he, when he comes in this glory, we're talking about his second coming and before him shall 
he shall be gathered all nations and he shall separate them uh, one from the other as shepherd divide his sheep from his goat. Um, sheeps have to be led and we, we are as sheep uh, uh, in Jesus pastor and uh, we have to be led led uh and the word of god is what leads us and guide us and when one is filled with the holy ghost and 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 then they are led of the spirit of god their understanding is enlightened because they have been filled with god's spirit so therefore now i understand this is what i must do this is what i have to do i have to live holy i have to live righteous i have to live godly before um the lord said, blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection, for on such the second death had no power. They, but they are, but they shall be priests and of God and of Christ and shall reign with him a thousand years. And that's during the time of this lesson right now, reigning with the Lord a thousand years is before, right? This is right after the tribulation. And then the millennium will start after the tribulation. Um, so, uh, but blessed is he that have part in the first resurrection on such the second has no power. So therefore we don't wanna, we don't wanna be in and wanna be part of this first resurrection, glory to God. And when Christ resurrected us, uh, he, when he when we died in the in the liquid grave, when we uh, uh, went down into the liquid grave, we were buried with Jesus, buried with him. And when we rose up, we walk in a newness of life, thanking God for half of salvation and 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 thanks to god we have to take our salvation very serious because uh i uh, have to cherish the word of god have to cherish our salvation because uh, uh god didn't have to fill us with his spirit he could have he could have gone to someone else and filled them with the spirit but he filled us with his spirit and we have to cherish what god has done for us glory to god every need uh, had something to do with survivor or, or quality of life and is important to every one of us. Um, so every everybody has needs of something. Um, so therefore, that's why God wants us to help one another, be there for one another, support one another. And, he, and now he's looking at, Jesus is looking at now, while they were while they were it came out of tribulation and hear what happened while they were in tribulation uh did they get there was every need supplied and god used man to supply those needs and he said when i was hungry so you gave me some meat you brought something to me when i was thirsty you gave me drink and when i was a stranger, you took me in. So you you gave me a place to lay my head, and you gave me food to eat. Uh, you did the things that uh, gave me what I needed to survive. Um, so when I was um, so you fed me, and he did all the things that uh, that was supposed to be done when he was sick. Say so you visit me, you help me, uh, you prayed for me, uh, glory to God. So he's looking at what, what Christ is doing. He's looking at how they treated them while they were in tribulation, how they were treated. And if we can't, if we can't keep up with the footman, we'll never be able to keep up with the horsemen. So we have got to stay focused, thanks of God at all times, knowing that God is with us and no, there is no, there's no, nothing, no temptation taken you, but such is common unto man. But God is faithful. He would not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation, he'll make a way of escape that you'll be able to bear it. So therefore, we have victory over whatever it is we're going through. We have victory over it. We can stand, saints of God. We can stand. Uh, we don't have to crumble up. We don't have to fall apart. We can stand. Just continue to look to Jesus uh, Glory to God. Let, let God do it. Let God do it. Let God take control. Let God do it. Glory to God. I'm going to go to Revelations. Let me go to Revelations um, 19 and 11. Revelations 19 and 11.
Revelations 19 and 11. Saying, and, and I saw heaven open, and behold, a white horse, and he that sat upon him called faithful and true. And in righteousness do he do, does, does he judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns. And when I think about the crowns on his head, uh, anything that uh, affects the brains, affects the thinking, affects the thoughts, uh, Jesus has already taken it to the cross. Say, and, and he had a name written, um, no man knew but he himself, but he was clothed with a virtue, virtue. Uh, dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God, uh, which is uh, Jesus during the time, during the time of the creation, Jesus was that word that God used at that time. He was the Word of God. Then, and then that word was made flesh, and it dwelt among men, and we behold the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Um, we're looking at the blood, the blood of his enemies. Um, his venture was dipped in blood. Um, his name is called the word of God. And his army, which are in heaven, followed him upon the white horses, clothed in fine linens, white and clean. And that, those are the redeemed, the redeemed ones, the redeemed and redeemed from the hands of the enemy. They have been redeemed. And, and this is what happens with us. We have been redeemed, glory to God, uh, by the blood of the lamb. She, Jesus shed his blood to redeem mankind back to him, to bring us back to a saving grace, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So um, looking at his redeemed, those that had been redeemed are going to be coming back with Jesus. Glory to God. Uh, if you were afraid of height um, during the time you're walking this earth, praise the Lord, you uh, at that time, you won't be afraid. Height won't bother you at all won't bother you at all. When you're going to be caught up, when we be caught up to meet the Lord in the air, heights won't bother us at all. Those that, because uh, uh, you know that the enemy is the one that brings fear anyway. He's the one that brings fear. But God, God has made a way of escape for all of us. So therefore you don't have to, nothing to worry about. You don't have to worry about, hey, when, I be, when I'm going up high and, and uh, I'm, even when you're going on a plane, you know that, that's sometimes like, Jesus, 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 you calling on the Lord, uh, going up. But the, but the thing is, when you, when you going up to meet Jesus, you ain't done, none of that's going to pass, going to come through your mind. You just going to be so glad, so glad that you stay saved, so glad that you turn, that you turn to Jesus, so glad that you held on, held on to Jesus, you held on to his hand. You're going to be so glad that you didn't go back into the world. Uh, you didn't become carnal minded. So carnal mind is death. Hallelujah. Carnal mind is death. Glory to God. There's enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God and now indeed cannot be. Glory to God. So our carnal mind is death. So uh, uh, we're so glad that we uh, didn't have a carnal mind, that we had a mind to, to talk to the Lord, had a mind to live holy before him. Glory to God. And, and we're looking at the, there are two, there are compartments. These are down in the lower parts of the earth. And, uh, and when Jesus died and went down into the lower parts of the earth, uh, uh, he led captivity captive. And he took the keys out of the devil's hand. He took the keys from, so the devil has no control, no control over, over the saints down in the lower parts of the earth. He has no control at all because Jesus took the keys, but they were alive. You see, the thing about it, the things that we all have to know that we never die. You have eternal in you. You will never die when the, when the, the flesh, the, the body goes back to the dust that, that brought it, it goes back to the dust. Uh, the inward man, that inward man, that soul uh, is still alive. And that soul spends eternity as to where God, where one has prepared for it to go. But the spirit, the spirit itself goes back to the God that given. 
glory to God. So there are there, uh, compartments down in the lower parts of, of the earth. And when Jesus went down there, uh, before Jesus, even before Jesus went down, when, when the, uh, Abraham and uh, Lazarus was there and Lazarus was resting in Abraham's bosom, uh, the rich man could look over and see Lazarus resting in Abraham's bosom. And rich man say, send, send Lazarus back to tell my brothers, don't come to this dreadful place. Uh, but Abraham told him to have the prophets uh, there, uh, let them hear him and Moses and the prophet, let them hear them. Let them hear them, give them an ear, tell them that they need to listen to what God is saying and that, that they won't come to this dreadful place. But yet, um, Lazarus, even if he wanted, even if Abraham wanted to uh, open the door and, and let them in, they could, could not come in. Um, uh, look at Noah, when, when, uh, when the water came, the, the rain came and how Noah, here Noah is inside the ark and God shut the door. The door could not be open. If God shut a door, no man can open it. But if God closed a door, no man can shut it. No man can open what God closed and no man can close what God opened. Glory to God. But God, but God. But God, God knows how to take care of his own. And all we have to do is have faith in God. Have faith in God. Abraham had faith when he stepped out to go uh, to Canaan. He stepped out. He had faith in God, knowing that God was going to take care of him. And God took care of him. God took care of him. Glory to God. Uh, let's go to our second part of our lesson. Um, evidence of righteousness, and that's 30, 37 through 40. So let us read. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee the uh, uh, hunger and fed thee, or uh, thirsty and gave thee drink? When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when, shall, when saw we uh, the sick or in prison and we came unto thee or and the king shall answer shall answer and say unto them verily I say unto you in as much as ye have done it unto one of the least of these my brethren ye have done it unto me so in other words what God is saying uh, what we do what we do for one another we're doing it unto the Lord when we reach in, especially when they are in need of something and we do, and we have not shut up our bowels of compassion against them, but we help them. Um, sometimes individuals just need just to come into the, the building and may just need a kind word to be said. Might just need to say, oh, you look so pretty. You're beautiful. Oh, I love you so much. Uh, just a kind word sometimes makes a big difference. So this is what God wants us to do. Just give a kind word, a kind word. Amen. So what, what we have to do, uh, evidence of, of the righteous, evidence of the righteous, uh, glory to God, said, then shall the righteous answer saying, Lord, they trying to remember, Lord, when did we see you? When do we see you while we were while we were in tribulation? When do we see you? When when did we get what are you what are we saying, Lord? But God is saying, whatsoever you do unto the least of these one, little ones, you've done it unto me. So when we reach out and help somebody, help somebody do something good for somebody, glory to God, we're doing it unto the Lord. And and the thing is. God will give back. Whatever we give out, he gives it right back to you. Thank you, Jesus. If it's a kind word, someone's going to come right now and give you a kind word. There is a time that you're going to need to hear a kind word from the Lord. So this group on the right hand of, of Jesus uh, previously called the sheep, but now they're called, uh, refer to them as the righteous. Uh, so we have the righteous on the right hand, we have the unrighteous on the left hand. So then when we're trying to remember when did we see Jesus, 
uh, that we needed to do these things. Jesus said, inasmuch as you have done it unto one of the least of these of my brethren, you did it unto me. So we got how we have to we have to be on our job, helping one another, doing good things for one another. Uh, and giving God glory, giving God praise. When we enter into his gates, we ought to enter in with thanksgiving. Now, when we enter into our, even our home, we ought to enter in with thanksgiving. Lord, you kept me while I was out there. You kept me while I was, went to the store. You kept me, Lord, while I, I was in the store. You kept me, you kept me that I, I was able to go to the store and get what I needed and bring it back. And Lord, you kept me, you kept me under your blood. So we have to just always give God glory. And when we rise in the morning, we ought to rise up with a praise in our heart, uh, thanking God for what he's done and what he's doing, going to do. Thanking God for taking care of us. God is the only one that can keep us. He's the only one that can keep us. Glory to God. Friends can't keep you. They will deceive you. They, they will let you down because they can't even keep their own self. Glory to God. But God can keep us. Hallelujah. But we have to stay faithful to him. Stay faithful to the Lord. No matter what you're going through, stay faithful to the Lord. Glory to God. Give God glory and give him honor. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, uh, at the time, the Son of Man will come, accompanied uh, by his holy angels, and he will sit on the throne, sit on his throne of his glory, and he will set up his reign as king over all the earth at that time. Uh, he is king. He is king now. He will always be king. Glory to God. He will always be Lord and Savior. He will always be glory to God. Hallelujah. He's King of Kings. He's Lord of Lord. He said, that is my name. My name is Lord. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Savior of the world. Glory to God. He's King and will reassure the righteous that he will, that whatever kindness we do in helping others, we will be blessed in doing it. We're doing it unto the Lord that he gets the glory out of our life. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So they, they didn't have to worry about it. And when the Lord answered and said, whatsoever we have done to, on the, to others, we've done it unto him so that God gets the glory. There is, we should not want to do anything that God don't get glory out of it should not want to take part in anything. If God is not going to get the glory, then we should want to leave it alone, get rid of it, leave it alone, step back. Glory to God. Folks, God needs to get the glory out of everything that we do. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Look at seven. Look at um, mm, Revelation 7 and 9. 7 and 9. So after this, after this, behold, and lo, a great multitude, which no man could number of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, um, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried uh, with a loud voice, saying, Salvation! to our God, uh, which sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lord. Uh, and all the angels stood around about the throne and about the elders and the four beasts and fell before the throne on his face and worship God. We're talking about worshiping God, salvation unto our God that sitteth upon the throne. Glory to God. And then saying, Amen, and blessed and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might. Uh, Glory to God. Be unto our God forever and ever. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. Be unto our God. Giving him glory. Giving him honor. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, glory to God. And uh, this is what God wants. This is what he requires of us to give him glory, give him honor. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everybody ought to give God some glory. Everybody ought to praise God for who he is and what he's doing and what he has already done. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We're going to go on to the last part, the judging of the unrighteous, the judging of the unrighteous. And that's 20, I mean, 41 through 46, judging of the unrighteous. Then shall he say unto uh, them on the left hand, depart from me, ye curse unto everlasting fire, prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was a hunger and ye gave me no meat. I was thirsty and ye gave gave me no drink. I was a stranger and ye took me not in naked and ye clothed me not sick uh, and in prison and ye visit me not. Then shall they also answer him, Lord, Lord, when saw we thee a hunger and a thirst or thirsty or a stranger or naked or sick or in prison and did not minister unto thee? Then shall he answer them, saying, Verily I say unto you, inasmuch as ye did it not to one of the least of these, ye did it not unto me. And these shall go away unto everlasting punishment, but the righteous unto ever, unto life eternal the righteous unto life eternal. Glory to God. The goats on the left they will be commanded to depart, to leave, to get away from the Lord, following, following, uh, uh, referring to as a curse. Uh, they have been cursed uh, to, to everlasting punishment because they did not, they did not uh, reach out and help the ones that were going through tribulation uh, during that time. I think I told you that uh, you couldn't buy unless you took the mark of the beast and you couldn't sell. You may have money, but you wouldn't be able to sell. So therefore, those that were during tribulation that needed help, needed someone to give to them to help them, uh, but yet uh, they could not get the help that they needed from this group of people. Glory to God. So here the Lord is cursing them and tell them, depart from me. I don't know you now. I don't know you anymore because you did not, you did not do what you were supposed to do. You did not help my brother. You did not help my sister. You did not help my mother. You did not give them water. You did not give them food. You didn't visit them when they were sick. You didn't visit them when they were in prison. And some of them were probably thrown in prison because of holding to the word of God, not letting go of God's word. They were probably thrown into prison, but they were uh, uh, the, the same were to go and visit them. They were to go and give them a word of encouragement, of encouragement. Let them know that God is with you. God will take care of you uh, and give them whatever they need. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So if they needed something, they were supposed to do that. First Timothy 3 and 3 and 4, it says, for this is good and acceptable in the sight of God, our Savior, who will have who will have all men to be saved and come into the knowledge of the truth. There is one God, one a mediator between God and man, and that is the man Christ Jesus. One mediator between God and man. Glory to God. So here, God is expecting, expecting, expecting the people to do, to help one another, to lean not to their own understanding, but in all their ways acknowledge him. Lord, where should I go this day? What should I do this day? Uh, 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 Lord, who, sh who should I go to this day? Oh God, what, 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 where, where am I going to go? Uh, getting directions from God and, and, and what the Holy Ghost does when the Holy Ghost is in an individual, which is the spirit of God living or bowling on the inside and it leads and it guides and it directs you as to what you should do. Thank you, Lord. And Jesus, the King now mentioned all six physical need, hunger, thirst, being a stranger, uh, being naked, being sick, being in prison, uh, 
not uh, this group did not meet any of those needs. They did not meet any of those needs. And here God wants us uh, to meet needs of individual. Each group had a different attitude towards helping others. And we have to have uh, the attitude, the spirit of God to dwell on the inside and the spirit of God will lead and guide us. We have to be led of the spirit of God and then we won't fulfill the lust of the flesh because flesh, flesh wants to do everything that the spirit of God does not want you to do. The flesh wants to do it. The flesh wants to involve in everything, but the spirit of God say, no, not so. They had not seen Jesus, neither wonder, neither, um, and not seen Jesus either, um, and wonder when they could possibly have missed doing these things for him. Some might say this is not fair, but one thing about the Lord, the Lord is always a fair individual. He's a fair individual. Glory to God. So I'm going to ask you to let, Lord, let God be God. I see my superintendent ready. Let God be God and let God, let God have his way and live a holy life before the Lord. Don't, 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 don't do what you feel like doing, but do what God have you to do. Live that holy life before God and God will direct you. God will lead you and God will direct you in all that you need to do. God bless you and Hope you've gotten something out of the lesson in Jesus' name.